welcome to Easy Mind, Easy Life. So, you've probably been wondering, where did she go? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I've had so many uh, revelations in the past few weeks. So where I've been, actually I got COVID about four weeks ago, 15th of June to be precise, right? So the first week I couldn't record anything because I couldn't stop coughing. I got that really dry cough. So every time I tried to talk, it would just, you know, I just couldn't. <laughs> so I thought that week, okay, I'll just rest, give it a rest. And, um, and I had plenty of videos that I had already pre-recorded anyway, so I thought I was just, you know, feeding them through and then I was running out. So <laughs> the second week was the achy bones and the headaches, so I also wasn't in a good place to be recording because uh, physically my body was just, no, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm just shutting down for these two weeks and I need rest was basically what my body was saying but then what happened was in going into the third week after i had the covid uh, i have what seems like a gallbladder attack now i say seems like because in 2011 2012 sorry 11 years ago was what i meant to say um, I had my gallbladder removed. I had a massive gallbladder attack in that year and my baby was only three months old and I panicked. The doctor convinced me that I had to have it removed even though my naturopath was saying I didn't. And I regret, you know, um, allowing the fear to take over and having followed that doctor because she wasn't a doctor I knew. She was just a specialist that I met for the first time. And it's obviously her job right as many gallbladder removals that she can do keeps her in business so you know she you know talked me into i needed to remove it because once it stops working it never works properly ever again and i believed her despite my naturopath saying that all i had to do was a, you know a simple remedy that she gave me and i did and it just helps to pass all the stones but the fear of the attack happening again when I was taking care of this baby, it was just so intense, it's so excruciating. And as a woman, I can honestly say, for me, that was more painful than the labor pains that I had with my daughter. Okay, so I know what people are thinking out there. There's no way, right? Labor pains are just so intense, it's, it's impossible. But, um, this feels like, for me, maybe for other people, gallbladder attacks feel different. It feel, it felt, and it feels like every time it comes back, it feels like someone stabs you right in the middle of your chest and they just stick that knife right in there and leave it there. And then that sharp pain of that knife being stabbed, you can't breathe, right? Because... The, the deeper you try to breathe and that knife is stuck in there, the sharper the pain. And so the very first time I had it, I thought, I honestly thought I was having a heart attack. And so I went to the doctor, sure that I was having a heart attack because both of my parents have heart conditions. And I thought, oh, that's it. It's my time. And it wasn't, it was like gallbladder attack. And I'm like, but it's in the middle of my chest. And my gallbladder is all the way over here. Like totally felt unrelated, but I thought, well, okay, you're the boss, right? You're the doctor. <laughs> If that's what you reckon it is. Anyway, I went to the hospital, they did all the tests and the heart was fine. That was in 2012, the very first time gallbladder got taken out. In 2017, I had the same attack. And this time the pain was excruciating and would not yield. It, it just, it was relentless. And I was in hospital for about 10 days and they had to have me on morphine because one, I couldn't eat. Anything that went down came straight back up. Two, the pain, I got to a point where I would pass out. I just couldn't stand the pain physically, right? My body just couldn't handle it. It would just pass out. 
And so they managed it with morphine and I went on a special diet after that, once I got out of the hospital and I was no longer in pain. Mind you, there are videos from four years back where I say I'd lost, I think it was something like 14 kilos or something like that in two weeks because I couldn't keep any food down and I'd just throw up and throw up and throw up and it was just, it was really intense. Anyway, um, at that time, towards the end of the 10 weeks when the pain just wouldn't go away, I was sure that was my time. That was it, that was, that was the end for me. I was sure of it. And for some reason I was spared, right? I got to live another day. I went on a special diet. But then, you know, you get busy <laughs> and you go back to, well, I've got to eat. And sometimes I'm in a rush. I don't have time to prepare something healthy every time. And this is what we're going to talk about in the next video. But I just wanted to share with you here where I've been. There's a few videos I want to make around this. So third time round was this time round. And because my diet was a little bit better than what it's been and I ditched the coffee about two years ago because I was finding that quite strong in my system. I could feel it in my system. And um, from the moment, you know, it hit my stomach, I could feel it working its power through my system, through, my, through the body. So I let go of that because I was, it was wreaking too much havoc on the body. And I thought, oh, look, if the body doesn't want it, why do I keep forcing it on there, you know, in there? So I stopped drinking coffee. That was, I think, what saved me from having the same episode as the one in 2017 where the pain just would not stop. But this time around was very different. Um, I could manage the pain at home. Uh, I had Panadine Fort that I got from the doctor and then at the hospital they said codeine is like the worst thing you can put in there when your liver is struggling. <laughs> struggling. So, uh, But it's all I had and it was the only thing that would keep me from going to the hospital because it would manage the pain and I would get to do the next day. And there was, there were days where I was just on a banana and an apple. And those were the days where there was no pain and I could get through that day. But every other day there was just so much vomiting and so much coming up and just the body rejecting everything, right? And so twice within those two weeks, I ended up the first time in the hospital when the pain hit the first time and I thought, oh, here we go again, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be in hospital for two weeks. And they sent me home, I managed. And then each day it would only hit once because in 2017, every time I woke up, that pain was back. It, it wasn't just once a day and it was done. It was all day and it was quite unbearable, intolerable. Whatever one of those words you want to use, it's like, please just end it now. I don't want to go on. That's how I, how it was when I got to day 10. I, I just can't do this. You know, I can't have another day of this. I was just, I give up. But this time around was like really, really different. Um, and I want to really talk about it in the next video because I don't want to drag it on too long here. But it was really about waking up to the relationship that I have with my body, um, being aware of my relationship with food, you know, uh, just really observing the thoughts that I've had my whole life around those two subjects. And that's something that I really wanted to talk about because I know, I know that so many of us have these thoughts uh, about our bodies or about food in general. And I think, you know, I feel that that is what triggers all this discomfort in our body. So let's have a look in the next, in the next few videos. Let's have a chat. The good thing was this time around in the hospital, it wasn't that I am sick and I am this and I am that. I found myself saying, my body is in pain. My body's in discomfort, my body. My body, my body. It's not I, because I know that I'm the energy inside the body. But it was the body trying to communicate to me. And this is why this pattern kept repeating, because I hadn't learned the lesson yet. That we are in constant communication with this body. All right, my darlings. 
I love you dearly. Happy to be back. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. By the way, I lost five kilos in those two weeks because I couldn't keep anything down. You don't try this at home. It wasn't fun. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.